morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, and welcome to GAN, Global Atheist News, our weekly review of how religion impacts humanity. This week's headlines. Liverpool Woman's Hospital Explosion is declared a terrorist incident. A Bataclan recording is played in court at the Paris attacks trial. Afghan girl footballers reach the UK on a Kim Kardashian West funded flight. A woman harasses a younger woman for not wearing the hijab. This fight exposes a generational divide in Iran. Archbishop Justin Welby is sorry for abuse accused bishop comment. A Philippine church leader was charged with child sex trafficking. Hindu nationalists are trying to create designer babies that are fair, strong and smart. Catholic bishops in Ghana reiterate their support for an anti LGBT bill. The Vatican launches a click to pray e rosary. In Catholic Italy, D baptism is gaining popularity. And if you touch this Swami's penis, you will have unlimited sex forever. There's a lot of news this week, and we start with Nuria's report. Hi, I'm Nouria Khan with this week's Global Atheist News Islamic Affairs Report. The explosion of a taxi outside Liverpool Women's Hospital is being treated as a terrorist incident. Taxi driver David Perry picked up a fare on Remembrance Day Sunday in the Rutland Avenue area of Liverpool and was asked to go to the hospital. As the taxi arrived at the hospital's drop-off area just before 11 in the morning, it exploded and Mr. Perry escaped from the car seconds before it was engulfed in flames. See this video. The passenger Iranian asylum seeker Imad al Swilmin died in the explosion. He had spent seven months experimenting with different explosives while plotting his attack at his bomb factory in a rented bedsit, according to police. Traces detected at the premises show he bought a range of chemicals capable of making more than one type of explosive, including one used by the 7-7 London bombers. The BBC has since confirmed he made a legal attempt to gain permission to stay in the UK, but it was rejected without being considered in court. Christian volunteers Mr Hitchcock told BBC Radio Merseyside that he and his wife Elizabeth Hitchcock had worked with predominantly Iranian asylum seekers as they took part in a popular course introducing newcomers to the faith known as the Alpha Course. They had befriended Imad al Swilmin, who they also knew as Enzo Almini, when he was destitute. He had come into contact with them through Liverpool Cathedral. Mr. Hitchcock said they had not seen al Swilmin in the four subsequent years after he left their home. He wanted to be a Christian and he liked what he had heard about salvation by faith, and that's what we taught him, said Mr. Hitchcock. 
He was on the streets, basically. He arrived here on April 2017. He was with us, then eight months. During that time, we saw him really blossoming as regard to his Christian faith. Every night we used to pray. My wife and him, and if there was anybody else in the house, we prayed for half an hour or so and studied the scriptures, and we had a great time together. And I was in no doubt by the time that he left us, at the end of that eight months, that he was a Christian. The Diocese of Liverpool's communications director, Stuart Haynes, said he believed Al Swilmeen was baptised in 2015 and confirmed in 2017. Liverpool Bishop Cyril Ashton admitted he had conducted the dead terrorist confirmation. Senior MPs vowed to launch a formal probe into fake Christian converts duping the Church of England to avoid being deported back to stricter Muslim countries. Other asylum seekers have been accused of playing the religious card to stay in the UK. Liverpool Cathedral's own clergyman, the Rev. Mohammed Egthadarian, had raised the alarm in 2016 that plenty of people were pretending to convert to help their case for staying in Britain. He said then, there are many people abusing the system. I'm not ashamed of saying that. People are desperate for a better life and sometimes they will lie for it. That's understandable. Tim Loughton, a senior Tory MP on the Home Affairs Select Committee, warned, There is a worrying new development where it appears certain asylum seekers are playing the religious card to avoid deportation to certain countries. And he vowed to launch a Commons investigation into the loophole, saying, This is gaming the system and something we must look into. He added, There are very serious questions to be asked about how this man could claim asylum after coming from a safe country and why he was still at liberty seven years on and free to commit this atrocity. A landmark trial into the 2015 Paris terror attacks has heard audio from the massacre at the Bataclan Concert Hall. The short recording came from a dictaphone that had remained on and had captured the entire night. Voices of the attackers could be heard, as well as gunshots, explosions and the sounds of screaming. An association of victims had requested that a few minutes of the audio recording be played in court. Arthur Denevaux, the president of Life for Paris, who himself survived the Bataclan massacre, said the audio allowed people to realise the horror in another way. On Thursday, the Paris court heard the voice of one of the three attackers, stating the attacks were for Syria and Iraq, while also mentioning the then French president Francois Hollande. We are bombing on land here. We don't need planes, the voice said at the beginning of the short audio recording before a gunshot. The first one to stand up, I shoot. The first one who moves, I put a bullet in his head. Is that clear? The first one who tries to be a vigilante, I kill him. Is that clear? Another two gunshots follow before an attacker says, you can only attack your president, Francois Hollande. You can blame your president. He is the one who led to this massacre today and you should know that this is only the beginning. The clip continues. Several shots are then heard, a man screaming and then the sound of an explosion, reported to be one of the attacker's suicide belts. The trial into the 2015 Paris attacks will last until May 2022, with 145 days of scheduled hearings. A group of Afghan girl footballers have flown into the UK, the culmination of an extraordinary rescue effort that began after the Taliban seized power. The girls, aged between 13 and 19, arrived from Pakistan overnight. Their flight was chartered by a Jewish aid organization and was paid for by the US star Kim Kardashian West. It's mission accomplished, said Khadija Popal, a former manager of Afghanistan's national women's team, who coordinated their rescue from Denmark. I'm so happy and so proud of these girls. They were traumatized. They've been through so much and managed to stay strong. Now they can start a new life and breathe freedom. The teenagers, mostly from Afghan provinces, all feared for their lives when the Taliban captured their cities. Some of their families had received death threats. People were searching houses for them, Ms. Popol told the BBC. The flight also rescued some female judges. In Iran, a woman harasses a younger woman for not wearing the hijab. The fight exposes a generational divide. The older woman says, this is an Islamic country. The younger lady says, this regime will be over soon. We've been suffering for 40 years. Stop your nonsense. See this video. 
جوانداد من خودم دا این شهیده میخواست ندی اونا رفتن دادن که از خاک دفاع کنن نه برای فضول های مثل شما داره که داره به تو چه به تو چه دلم از دلم میخواد دلم میخواد به شما اصلا رفتی نداره فیلم تو میفرستم اصلا از گلدی نجات آدم بزی شما دیگه دورت رو تموم شده دیگه دیگه چند سال خونه باره کردی تو شد دیگه تمومه دیگه تمومه And now, back to you, John. Thank you, Nuria. The Archbishop of Canterbury has apologised for saying a significant cloud hung over the name of the late Bishop of Chichester, George Bell. In 1995, a woman alleged that Mr. Bell, who died in 1958, sexually abused her as a girl. The police were called in only after she wrote to Mr. Welby, the Archbishop of Canterbury, in 2013. In 2015, the church had paid £16,800 in an out-of-court settlement and apologised. However, a review in 2017 by Lord Carlisle QC criticised the Anglican Church for a rush to judgment in assuming Mr Bell's guilt and said it had not been fair to both sides. He said that Bishop Bell had been hung out to dry and the truth of what Carol was saying had been implicitly accepted without serious investigation or inquiry. However, in the aftermath of Lord Carlyle's report, Archbishop Welby refused to exonerate Bishop Bell and said in January 2018 that a significant cloud is left over his name. Later, in 2018, the church said publicly it had referred fresh information to Sussex police and a subsequent review said there was no evidence behind these latest claims. In his personal statement, Mr. Welby said, the church is on a journey of thoroughgoing repentance for previously ignoring claims of abuse. This is why the posthumous allegations made against Bishop George Bell were taken seriously and investigated fully, he said. What I say today that is new and should have been said sooner is this. I do not consider there to be a significant cloud over Bishop George Bell's name. Previously, I refused to retract that statement and I was wrong to do so. I took that view because of the importance that we rightly place on listening to those who come forward with allegations of abuse and the duty of care we owe to them. But we also owe a duty of care to those who are accused. And I apologize for the hurt that my refusal to retract that statement has caused to Bishop Bell's surviving relatives, colleagues, and long-standing supporters. They have all raised this issue, often powerfully, and I have recognized my error as a result of their advocacy. The leader of a Philippines-based church was charged with having sex with women and underaged girls who faced threats of abuse and eternal damnation unless they catered to the self-proclaimed Son of God, federal prosecutors in Los Angeles announced on Thursday. Apollo Quibaloy, 71, is head of the Kingdom of Jesus Christ Church, founded in 1985. The church claims to have 6 million members in about 200 countries. Quibaloy claims to be the appointed son of God and in 2019 claims that he stopped a major earthquake from hitting the southern Philippines. 
The indictment contains a raft of charges, including conspiracy, sex trafficking of children, sex trafficking by force, fraud and coercion, marriage fraud, money laundering, cash smuggling, and visa fraud. The indictment accuses Quibaloy and others of recruiting women and girls, typically 12 to 25 years old, as pastorals, who cooked his meals, cleaned his houses, massaged him, and travelled with him around the world. Some also had sex with Quibaloy on scheduled night duty, including some minors, such as a 15-year-old girl, according to the indictment. They were coerced into night duty under the threat of physical and verbal abuse and eternal damnation. The health wing of the Hindu nationalist group Rashtriya Swayam Sivak Sang, RSS, has an astonishing plan to use eugenics to help dark-skinned Indians produce fair and lovely children. The Garb Vigyan Sanskar project claims to use a combination of Ayurvedic herbs and practices, dietary regulation, and other prescriptions to purify the sperm and eggs of interested p- potential parents and create Uttam Santati, perfect progeny, with light skin and a high IQ. The plan was launched in Gujarat over a decade ago and has been expanding to other states since 2015. Currently, there are 10 branches that promote the service in Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh, and more are expected to open up in Uttar Pradesh and West Bengal, the report said. Ayurveda has all the details about how we can get the desired physical and mental qualities of babies. IQ is developed during the sixth month of pregnancy. If the mother undergoes specific procedures, like what to eat, listen and read, the desired IQ can be achieved. Thus, we can get a desired, customised baby. Karishma Mohandras Nawani, the national convener of the project, said. Our objective is to make a strong India through Uttam Santati. Our target is to have thousands of such babies by 2020, she added. The project claims to be able to repair genes, to prevent defects from being passed on, and says it has helped produce 450 super babies so far. According to Nawani, the RSS's health wing has already organized a number of seminars and counseling sessions to promote the project in Delhi and Mumbai, as well as in towns such as Udupi in Karnataka and Visakhapatnam in Andhra Pradesh. On May the 7th, the Calcutta High Court permitted the group to hold a session in Kolkata, despite opposition from the state's commission for protection of child rights and as many as 50 couples had reportedly signed up to attend. The group's plan is to have a facilitation centre to offer such sessions and services in every state of the country. The parents may have a lower IQ with a poor educational background, but their baby can be extremely bright. Hitesh Jani, the national convener of the RSS's health wing, the Arogya Bharati, told the Indian Express. If the proper procedure is followed, babies of dark-skinned parents with lesser height can have fair complexion and grow taller. This is in line with the RSS's dedicated, decades-long project to purify the country, making India a nation for a very specific type of Hindu Indian alone. It fits with the Hindu rights historical appreciation for the efforts of Hitler in Nazi Germany in the 1930s as that country embarked on a horrifying and destructive project to improve the stock of population and create an Aryan super race. A number of Indians who identified as Aryan descendants 
roundly supported and celebrated Hitler's eugenics project. As Ghana's parliament debates a controversial bill to criminalize the practice and promotion of homosexuality, the country's Catholic bishops say it should be voted into law. The Parliament of Ghana has begun public hearings on a controversial plan to criminalize the practice and promotion of homosexuality, a proposed law that is widely supported by the religious leaders, including the country's Catholic bishops. The hearings are part of a debate expected to last around four months on the promotion of proper human sexual rights and Ghanaian family values bill. LBGTQ plus activities pose a great threat to Ghanaian culture and values, said Pastor Abraham Ofori Kuragu of the Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council. The bill is intended to protect children from the dangerous activities of the LGBTQI plus community. The bill before us is a wise way to incorporate sound cultural values, said the pastor. The Ghana Catholic Bishops Conference reiterated its support for the bill in a final communique issued at the end of its annual General Assembly, which was held November the 5th to November the 13th in the country's Upper West region. We wish to reaffirm our unflinching support for this bill and to appeal to all Ghanaians to support it so that it is passed into law, the bishop said. The position of the Catholic Church on LGBTQIA plus has remained the same, that such practices are against not only Christian values, but Muslim and Ghanaian traditional values as well, they said. During our interaction with the people of the Upper West region, the Muslim position on LGBTQIA plus was reiterated by the regional chief Imam, they also noted. Similarly, the chiefs of the Wa and Jiripa traditional areas also expressed their support for the bill, the Catholic leaders said. Ghana's 1960 criminal code defines homosexual activity as unnatural carnal relations. And people who engage in homosexual acts face up to three years in prison. The new bill is more specifically designed to combat a recent increase in LGBT advocacy and activism in the country. And the 36 page proposed legislation, which is being sponsored by eight parliamentarians, goes even further than the 1960 code. First, it makes reporting of homosexual acts mandatory. And second, it prohibits, under penalty of imprisonment, any activities that promote, support, or fund LGBT activity. The proposed law also calls for a prison sentence of up to five years for consensual physical acts between people of the same sex. Among the other religious denominations that have strenuously defended the bill is the House of Bishops of the Anglican Church in Ghana. But the position of the Ghanaian Anglicans Church is out of sync with the worldwide Anglican Communion, of which it is a member. I'm gravely concerned by the draft anti-LGBTQ plus bill due to be debated by the Ghanaian Parliament, tweeted the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, on October the 26th. On numerous occasions, the primates of the Anglican Communion have stated their opposition to criminalization of same-sex attracted people, most recently and unanimously in the communique of the 2016 primates meeting. The Vatican is hoping to pull in tech-savvy youngsters with the launch of an e-rosary bracelet. The gadget, which costs $109.85, pounds, can be worn as a bracelet and is activated by making the sign of a cross. It is connected to the Click to Pray e-rosary phone app 
which is designed to help Catholic users pray for world peace and contemplate the gospel. The app tracks a user's progress and contains visual and audio explanations of the rosary. Its beads are counted as prayers are recited, and users can choose from three ways of praying. There is the standard rosary, a contemplative rosary, or a thematic rosary. The rosaries are made up of 10 black agate and hematite beads, plus a metal cross that detects movement. This project brings together the best of the church's spiritual tradition and the latest advances of the technological world, a click to pray press release said. Taiwan based tech company Gadgetech Inc. developed the gadget, which is water resistant and compatible with Android and iOS smartphones. This is not the first time the Catholic Church has attempted to attract young people with technology. In 2018, a Christian take on a hugely successful Pokemon Go gaming app, Follow JC Go, a Christian take on the game, lets players catch saints or Bible characters instead of the little Japanese monsters. As with Pokemon Go, the game uses the player's smartphone camera to take in their surroundings, then superimposes digital characters, but you're more likely to find St. Peter than Pikachu. While agreeing that it is impossible to cancel a baptism, Italy's Personal Data Projection Authority now states that everyone has the right to abandon the church. The de-baptism is finalised once an applicant declares the intention to abandon the church and the decision is registered by the church authorities, normally in the form of the local bishop. Every year in Italy, more and more people choose to go through the simple process, which became available two decades ago at the behest of the Union of Rational Atheists and Agnostics, abbreviated in Italian as UAAR. A lack of data makes it difficult to establish how common the phenomenon is, but some dioceses are keeping track. The Diocese of Brescia, east of Milan, said in its diocesan newspaper in August that 75 people asked to be debaptized in 2021, as opposed to only 27 in 2020. Combining this partial data on a website UAAR recently launched where people can register their debaptisms, Roberto Grundin, National Secretary of the UAAR, said the organization estimates that more than 100,000 people have been debaptized in Italy. The Reverend Danielle Mombelli, Vice Chancellor of the Diocese of Brescia, and Professor of Religious Sciences at the Catholic University of the Sacred Heart in Milan, said it's not possible to erase the baptism because it's a fact that historically happened and was therefore registered. What the procedure does is formalize the person's abandonment of the church, said Mombelli. But according to canon law, anyone who goes through the procedure is committing the crime of apostasy, which, Mombelli said, comes with severe consequences. Finally, I have no words for this. Free Thought Hour, my live Q&A show, with this week's guests, Jenna and Justin, will be starting in a few minutes. So stay tuned to this channel. My two guests are podcasters in their own right. Come and join in. The GAN team will be back with our weekly news review at the same time next week. Please like, subscribe, share, comment, set the notifications, etc. This has been Global Atheist News. Thank you for watching.